what's going to be the future of APS-C cameras? What's really going to be the future of full frame? As I mentioned to you on a prior video, it doesn't matter whether you're a Canon, Sony, Nikon, or Fuji. We're all messing with flour and dough here, okay? And it, it, interestingly enough, like you can't make chocolate chip cookies out of, you can make a lot of stuff out of flour and dough. The limitations is uh, the silicone sensor technology that's actually, and this is a tiny one from a little point and shoot camera. I mean, point and shoot, excuse me. Limitations. We have now reached it. It doesn't matter whether it's like a full frame a Canon uh, 5DSR, which is a 51 megapixel camera. The pixel pitch is 4 micrometers. I explained this in the other video in great detail. Nikon D500, it's a 20.9 megapixel. Well, how could that be the same as a full frame camera? They're both the same damn thing. Oh, no, they're not. A camera is not a sensor, but we're talking about the native gain at the sensor. No camera is a sensor, it is a signal processor. Okay, it's an image processor. Signal, image, same thing. We're talking about digital photography here, not film, of course. They're both exactly the same. Why are they both the same? One's a DX and it's 20.9 megapixels, and the other is a full frame and it's 51 megapixels. Because, girlfriend, they're both basically four micrometer pixel pitch cameras. We have reached the limits at which signal, i.e. image processing, has peaked. As I told you before in prior videos, only, only so much orange juice you can squeeze out of that orange. So what is the future of camera technology? What is that new thing that these camera folks are going to have to invent to make you lust? I mean, they, they, they have to make you. That's the only way they stay alive, is they have to come out with a new product that makes people go, Ooh, I've got to have that. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Since the 4 micrometer pixel pitch has been reached, okay, and we've squeezed all the orange juice out of that orange, what's the new technology? The next future, and I mentioned this like 8 months ago, and I'm 100% correct, it'll be adaptive resistance technology. What that means, like if you have a high contrast scene, the camera will apply in a single shot instead of multiple shots for like HDR photography, it will apply adaptive resistance. That is what is coming. That is a technology. Everything else is going to stay the same because we've already reached the limit. It's basically 3.8 to 4 micrometers. As I told you in the prior video, all these cameras, the Canon 70 Mark II, the Nikon D7100, Nikon D7200, Nikon D5200, Nikon D500, the Canon 5DSR, all these things have one thing in common. 3.8 to 4 micrometer pixel pitch. Eh, that's it. Native gain has been reached, signal processing has been stretched right to the max. Now we are really squeezing all the OJ out of that orange. So we have to have new crap to pimp to the customers to make them go, I'm going to sell this camera. Ooh, I want that latest camera because it's got that cool feature. Yeah, I got to have it. And that cool feature, <laughs> I'm, being, I'm, I'm laughing because it's not because it's funny, because it's true. I'm predicting the future here. And, uh, a lot of people have actually been making fun of me recently in a good way. They'd be like, <laughs> they'd be calling me a schmuck. It's like, all those things you said that were going to happen, they did happen. It's like, yeah, I told you that's what's what was going to happen. Adaptive resistance technology. So what you'll be able to do is take like a high contrast scene. Say you got a chick standing at the entrance of a cave, okay? So she's pretty poorly lit. And then, you know, the background is out in the bright sunlight. Like, that's some high contrast crap without a speed light to actually fill the flash. Uh, to use uh, some fill flash to uh, raise the illumination of her to have a better dynamic range between her and the really bright background. What the camera will do is it'll have a mode where you can take one shot and it will even that out. What it'll actually do is it'll apply resistance to the bright background and it will apply the native gain to the subject so that you end up with this basically HDR photography. You won't have to have a tripod. You won't have to take multiple shots and combine them like you do in HDR. It'll be one shot only. You take a shot, you tell the camera, there's a lot of contrast here. Your camera will tell you, you got a lot of contrast here. You, you stick it in like in puss mode. It'd be like, there will be a wheel, it'll be a thing on the top, somewhere on the camera you can shoot, choose like uh, 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 HDR puss mode. It should be called like, instead of P mode, it'll be called PHDR. Like program HDSR, puss HDR, <laughs> P, whatever they call it doesn't make any difference. The technology is the same. 
The camera will be applying resistance to too much light if it is too many EV stops away from your subject that you've identified. The camera will apply resistance to that and then it will apply native gain to the subject, for example. And then what you will have are these shots that look like HDR for day. That is what people are going to go, ooh, I have to own it. That is the future of camera technology. That is going to be the next thing because all these camera manufacturers, Canon, Fuji, Nikon, Sony, they have all reached the 4 micrometer pixel pitch ceiling where the native gain has been squeezed out of the orange. Now we have to come up with new crap to stick in that camera to make you want to buy a new camera. The other thing will be improvements, obviously so, in video. Um, new little goofy things that there's all sorts of little goofball features. It's like, well, now you could do uh, optical image stabilization in 4K, you know, handheld, and uh, it'll do this. And, and actually, the uh, adaptive resistance technology, as it will be applied to video, that will require a lot of processing power in the camera, by the way a lot to do that for video. Once that gets applied to video, adaptive resistance technology for 4K video filming, that is like the video maker's super orgasm when you go, oh my god. <laughs> that is what every videographer, and I'm not a videographer, but it's what every videographer wants. Ultra high processing video adaptive resistance technology. That is the future. And once that happens and God knows the camera will have to be bigger because battery technology really has not improved in the past 15 years. It really has not. I mean, it's improved some, but there's been no super magic new battery. You know, it's like a tiny little battery that delivers, you know, enormous amounts of power. Um, that technology will be a videographer's wet dream. They're going to go, oh my God, <laughs> that is coming. That'll actually be the furthest thing on the near horizon in the next 10 years. The nearest thing is going to happen is as a single shot HDR photography for photography. That almost sounded redundant, didn't it? Adaptive resistance technology for single shot. Improvements in 4K video. Um, there'll be some other little goofball improvements uh, like improved buffering and uh, better... The X-T2 has got plenty fast autofocus tracking. You see, the neat thing about autofocus tracking is the HD, uh, like the Fuji, for example. Um, you see, you, guess what hasn't changed in the past 100 years? You know, um, Really, they did have uh, cars that would go 100 miles an hour around the track back in the 1910s and 20s. I mean, not all of them, but some of them. People haven't gotten any faster. Dogs haven't, boating, you know ski jumpers, all the stupid stuff that we use for action, that stuff has remained the same, you know. <clears throat> as fast as people ran in the Olympics, uh, like two, I forget how old the Olympics go back to ancient Greece, uh, 20, up to 10,000 years ago, right? That stuff has not changed. So really good autofocus tracking on this camera, I mean, that's set in stone. It's like, you know, the runners ain't, gonna get, ain't going to get any faster at the Olympics. You know, your poopy dog, unless they start to de breeding poopy dogs uh, that have uh, like uh, steroids in their genes where they're able to run as fast as jackrabbits on crack, this thing will also track a, track a jackrabbit on crack. So none of that stuff is going to change. So that's really good news that of those people that like own a Fuji X-T2. It's like a future-proof camera. The action and everything's not going to change. So anyway... That's the future of uh, camera technology because we have reached the 4 micrometer pixel pitch limit of native gain orange juice extraction. Okay, Given shutter speed, given aperture, 4 micrometers is it. Signal processing, um, 80 converters, SNR firmware has squeezed ee, every bit of true signal out of uh, the silicon wafer technology that exists in cameras. That is why Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sony... They have all reached a 4 micrometer, 3.8 to 4 micrometer pixel pitch limit. That's the ceiling. <whistles> and uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Now this, this is a point and shoot camera. So someone's going to also be like, you're wrong because we've got a point and shoot camera here. And this is like a 1.6 micrometer pixel pitch. This is actually out of a point and shoot camera. Yeah, but you know what? The dynamic range on this sucks. And it's not for making big prints, nor does this produce raw files that you can extract any uh, usable, great dynamic range or information out of it. So yes, 
like 1.6, 1.5 micrometer. Yeah, this does exist. The only problem is for professional and advanced amateur photography, the images that this produces, they're plenty good enough for 8 by 10s obviously. But what is needed for advanced amateur and professional photography? No. No dice. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.